Greetings. I am Takur. How are you all today? Very good. Thank you, Takur, for coming. Much love, Takur. Thank you for asking. Are there questions today? I sense that there are many that want some answers. Okay. Um, let me start with uh, Emma D. She said, uh, I would like to ask the court if it's possible to get a body scan and for the removal of any negative or redundant implants or suppression technology. Thank you. Very well. I know who Emma is and uh, we have already noticed some things there and it will be taken care of. Okay. Um, right now, I go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, no, continue. I will say what I have to say in a little bit. Okay. Um, no, that would sit for her. She doesn't have any more questions. I understand. And then um, from Liney, um, she's interested in knowing if she has a past life connection to D. She's a lady in her metaphysical group. I will check on that for her. Yeka chapa ata chichiwatienta. There is some connections, but I will get to Liney on a personal level and let her know what they are. Okay. Um. At this time, let me make a small report on the fourth dimensional energy cloud that is coming. We have moved farther out into the into the solar system as not to be disturbed by the cloud that is coming. So, uh, but our communications will continue. We should be able to communicate even through the fluctuation of the fourth dimensional energy cloud. So, do not be worried. We still will be in communication with you. Many times, uh, people have asked us if we are are going to leave completely, but we are not. We are just going to stay outside the realm so that we do not get pulled in by the cloud. But it is it is safe at this point. So we are still moving forward with all of our plans with humanity. I will still be able to, to communicate clearly, I believe, during this period of time. The only thing that might be interrupted is any medical infor medical infusions or things of that nature may be affected, but we cannot determine that at this point because we do not know how it's going to affect humanity. That is to say, the infusion itself will not be affected but humankind will be affected in such a way that they may not be able to accept the infusion the same way as they did on normal third dimensional uh, times, for lack of a better way to say it. Continue. That is all okay. I had to say. Okay. Now, how come how come it af it affects you? Are you leaving because you don't know how it would, it would affect you? Well, it would, it would draw us into the cloud. We don't want to be inside the cloud because there's a lot of fluctuation in the fourth dimensional energy there, and that would affect us, yes, all the different fluctuations in that energy. Now, we are moved away because it is a strong and very powerful cloud, and so we do not want to be pulled into it. We want to stay clear of it so that we can maintain status quo. Okay. Understanding that if we were to be pulled inside of it, it would be very difficult to get out of, for one thing, because the energy there is very strong. And the second thing is there is a lot of fluctuation within the cloud in certain areas of it. Um, not that the whole cloud is filled with fluctuation, no but there are certain parts of it that are and if we were in that part it would ruin communications or cause it to be very unstable therefore we would prefer to remain outside of it so that we can remain in control 
So have you noticed um, any changes within the humans uh, due to, to the cloud? Yes, we have. There's a great deal of fluctuation and agitation with humans as it, as it occurs right now. Um, they seem to be very agitated and very sensitive to the energy. And there is a lot of deja vus, a lot of uh, different things happening with humanity. They try the, the more positive humans stay, the better it will be for them going through this time. However, it seems to be causing agitation as it's approaching because they are not used to this kind of a fourth dimensional energy fluctuation in the body and brain. So therefore, those that are more third dimensional are not as affected as much. But those that are experiencing a lot of fourth dimensional growth are experiencing more fluctuation and seem to uh, have moments of great uh, agitation or anxiety but it does not last long, but it is lasts long enough to make an effect on the human behavior. Has anyone experienced that? Yes, I have. Yeah. Yes. Irritated. It is it makes you irritated for a short while because the energy is fluctuating so strongly at some points. You see the energy is getting stronger, it's getting closer, and so Actually, if you want to be honest about it, the energy field is not really moving very fast, but the solar system is moving toward it at a faster rate because of the rotation of the the rotation of everything around the center of the galaxy. And so therefore, the cloud does move and it's moving in the same direction as the solar system. So that it makes sense that they are moving in the same direction. But for some reason, the uh, fourth dimensional energy cloud is attached to some something in that area that it doesn't move very far from a certain area in space. It sort of st fluctuates around this particular area in space, and that's something that we're not sure why it does that. But it stayed in the same place or very close to the same place for a long period of time. We are, we are actually monitoring it, and it's only moved a few thousand miles in several months. So that is, that is not very far when in the scheme of things. So to occur, some of the events that have, you know, there's a lot of events that have happened uh, in the last few weeks. Um, yes. And, you know, some, a lot of them very tragic. So is that related to that, or is that something that was just written? There are a couple things happening at this point. Uh, one of the things that has happened is that possession is taking place on those with low self-esteem and dark energy without their permission. This thing that happened in France, the person was possessed and ran through the crowd but he would normally not be and he would normally not give permission for that but something has happened that they were able to get to him and possess him at that time and he was able to they were able to possess him and and have him do that but it was not a contractual possession they just possessed him um, without him wanting to be. He was just in a very low state, a very low energy state, a very low thought process, and somehow they were able to get a hold of him. This is very unusual, and it's not something that is normal, and it is not something that is permitted, actually. So, so this was a very unusual case. He so was not working for anyone. He just was possessed and was, and, and if you look at his background, there was nothing in his background of psychological in, incompatibilities or an imbalance. He just was a, a very low self-esteem person, a very sad, depressed individual, but they were able to take over somehow.
I do not believe he gave permission for that. I could be wrong about that. But at this point, it just appears that somehow they were able to take over him, which frightens me a little. Okay. Um, and and uh, the what happened in Turkey, the coup that happened in Turkey? Um, that was something that was coming for a long time. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I think Michelle had a question relating to, to what you just spoke about. Yes. Much love to her. Much love. So yesterday, um, Brooke has worked on, I don't really know his name, but she was with him yesterday, and she's worked on his etheric chakras before. Yes. And he's very, um, I don't know what he is. He's supposed to be super special. So yesterday when I met him, he was profusely sweating. He had just worked on her and removed two attachments. And she was very, very uncomfortable. First question, if you can tap into it, she would really love to know what the attachments were. One that came out of her head felt like a big slug. And the one that came out of her either heart or solar plexus area felt like it had teeth. Yes, I understand what this is. I do not really want to say the names of the entities over the okay. airwaves. Okay. But she, yes, they did, they were authentic and they did get removed. And one of them was um, possessing her fear. Uh, was a it was a, a possession of fear because she has great fears about moving forward and being successful. And this was removed from her. That's beautiful. However, in the process, apparently, something happened to the man, like we were just talking about, where his personality completely changed, and he was starting to get belligerent about needing to destroy evil, um, which reminds me of another person I'm thinking about with, who has been in my awareness recently, who is also belligerent with his message from the Elohim, which is an oxymoron. No, that is not. <laughs> the, Elohim is, the Elohim is not a belligerent group. They're a loving and very high... high exactly. Instinct. Very light. If there is belligerent messages from any group that is of a light heart, you know that something is wrong and has there has been tampering with that message. The Elohim right. would never give a belligerent message. Or exactly. never act in a belligerent way. In fact, I find it hard to to even know that they could act in a belligerent way at this point. They are so high in spirituality and and in their their methods are are very much above reproach. Exactly. But the guy who was with Brooke yesterday, and I wish I knew his name, but I don't. He suddenly got very belligerent, like the agitated, and he sounded like a, like a little kid who's like on wearing a cape and wanting to destroy bad guys. Had he protected like, himself had he protected himself from the things that he removed? Okay, because see, I wasn't there. I walked in after the fact and I just started helping her with, you know, toning and angel I stuff. See. You could have and taken then, on one of the the entities could have just, gone into him at that time if he was not protected. Okay, is there a way I can help him out, or you can help him out? Yes, you you can help him, I can help him. If you know what you're doing, anyone can help him. I'm but, not sure. I don't know what I'm doing with uh, that kind of stuff. Well, if you <laughs> get me in touch with him, I can help him. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Much love to you. Much love. It's, does anyone in the room have a question for Takur? Yes, I have a question. No, uh, hold, hold on. Hold on, Brian. Anyone? No, I, I mean with, with Jim. Oh. Ah, is there any questions? I do not think so at this time. Brian, you may ask your question. Yes, hello, my friend. How are you, Takur? I'm very well. Thank you very much. 
Yes, yes. Uh, my question is uh, just a two-part question real quick. First, uh, the this fourth dimensional energy, yes. um, the creation of it, is it something that's just natural in the universe or was it created by extraterrestrials or angelic energy? It would seem to be a natural phenomenon at this point. We have not detected any sentience within it, meaning that there is really no life forms in in there. There is some plasma which means that it could possibly become sentient at some time, but it is not sentient at this time. And it is just fluctuating energy. And it is possible to have these kinds of anomalies in space. There are many kinds of anomalies in space that even your people do not know about as of yet. These kinds of fourth dimensional clouds have appeared in other galaxies as well. Ah, I see. Interesting. There are actually some clouds of fifth dimension and other dimensions. I don't know how to explain it, but there are some dimensional clouds created from the beginning of time. Perhaps the creator uh, put them there for a special purpose to keep balance in certain areas. I am not sure. We, but it is a curiosity because we do not know how they form and they, we do not know how they, why they do not move very much. They seem to be fairly, very, fairly slow moving clouds. They do not move very quickly and they do not, they, they stay fluctuating and powerful, but they do not seem to be, uh, diminishing in energy very much. There is some energy re release of, from them, of course, and that is what you're feeling while, when the cloud gets closer. But it, the actual field or aura around the cloud is actually fairly weak compared to the actual cloud itself, which, of course, some people would say, well, that's not abnormal. But in this case, the strength of the cloud would seem to uh, generate a greater aura, but only as you get very close to the cloud does the aura get very strong. The aura that you are in right now that reaches out hundreds of thousands of miles, of course, is very, very light and very, it does have effects on humanity and things of that nature, but it does not seem to be very strong. But as you're getting closer now to the September deadline, the September 7th or 8th, when it's, when it's possible that your solar system will be moving through it, it is not that strong. And, in, and not until September will you be feeling this, a stronger... Um, a stronger pull from it, or a stronger uh, aura from it. And the other part of that question, then, um, is that like a? Um, it's almost like, is it like a magnetism then, like an effect? It's almost like our consciousness. We can affect it, and it can affect no, us. No, it it does. Unlike a magnet, which yeah. sometimes can repel it self or attract itself but it is more like the attracting part of uh, the magnet it draws on fourth dimensional energy and that is why it is drawing the timelines together a little closer as it moves it draws the timeline together so you may be able to see things from the other timelines you may be experiencing deja vus which means that you're slightly ahead of time in in some way that is what deja vu is, is you're, you finally just get slightly ahead of yourself in time and, and that moment seems like you're repeating it. But wow. you are actually just had it and you, you have it again. But this, is, this energy draws fourth dimensional energy to it and that's why you are so affected by it and why we are, is that we are fourth dimensional beings and you have fourth dimensional energy that has been released into your systems since the 2012 time so 
I mean, not that you didn't have fourth dimensional energy before then, but it's been activated in a greater way if, since the end of 2012. So okay. now it can pull on that energy and it can affect that energy in a greater way. Therefore, you will be experiencing things that you have not experienced before. Anyone who is more third dimensional and does not have the energy moving around as much and, and, or is not using it will not be a, affected as much, but they still will be affected. Uh, there, there will be those third dimensional people that will start seeing things and think that they are actually that couldn't possibly be. They've it's already happened a few times where people say, I, I thought I saw this or that. And what they are seeing is another a fluctuation in the timeline that something from another timeline came rather close and they were able to see into it just briefly. Wow. And then it fluctuated away. But they thought it was perhaps an apparition or that, you know, they were going a little batty. But it's not true. It is an actual fact that you can see into the other timelines. Especially when the cloud is coming through, you may be able to see some, especially with the fluctuating areas, some areas so of that, that timeline come closer and then farther away again. So does that mean also the ships and actual aliens on the planet we might be able to glimpse up? Those people that are fourth dimensional or third dimensional that are in your space are leaving the solar system because they know that they will be able to possibly be seen or affected by the cloud in some way. They do not know there is not enough study about the cloud to know exactly what will happen, if they will be seen or not. So many of the ships have moved away or to a, a greater distance so that they will not be affected just like we have. That's all, Takur. Much love, my friend. Thank you so much. Much love to you as well. Sheer. Hello, Takur. How are you? Very well, Sheer. How are you? I'm very well. Uh, I have three very short questions. One, except from what I've told you that I started to experience, I didn't start to experience any Mandela effects. It's because of Remulac uh, protections? Yes, Remulac has a cone or, a, or some kind of protection around you that you will not be affected by this cloud as much. Of course, that is because they are a very powerful race and can do many things that not many species can do. I see, but uh, it's supposed also to plant, let's say, seeds in us for the future. Will those seeds oh. be planted? Yes. They know what they are doing, and they know how they want to affect you. So they are using the protection in the way that they see fit. And actually it's it's helping you. You will be able to see things around you and not be affected by, by it. Hmm. Okay. Um, also, there are different channels going around saying that uh, when the cloud will come, certain people will be locked in the first, uh, fourth density and some people will not be in the fourth density and will be locked in third density or something of that nature. I do not Can know how they could make that prediction when no, none of the species that I know of have studied the phenomenon well, well enough to know how it's going to affect human beings. They are making some guesses on how that it might affect human beings, but these are not have not been experienced by humanity ever. So it's been 237 million years since Earth has gone through this cloud. That is like one revolution of the galaxy. So it is that before the last time the Earth went through this cloud, no humans existed. So mm. therefore, how would they know how it affects human humanity? And how will they know how it because of certain things that humanity are unique with how it will affect them actually. And I do not think that anyone will be trapped 
in the cloud, it will just continue to, the cloud will continue to move, the solar system will continue to move at the same rates at as, as it always was, and when you come out of the cloud, things will, should return to normal within a, a reasonable period of time. Of course, there is the, still the aura of the cloud, and it is greater at the other side as you move through, because you will be pushing out energy from the cloud, so it may last a little longer, it may be a little stronger for a while, but I do not know how they can make any predictions about what it will do to humanity when no human has ever been through it before. Uh, yes, what I meant, it was the beings that they are channeling, and when I say locked in, I'm saying some will move through the through a fourth density and some will stay in third density. That I was my not, meaning. Yes, I do not know how they would know that. That okay. has not been proven. It's maybe a speculation. I see. And the cloud will be uh, from September, I think, the 6th in my birthday, and until uh, February. Is there going to be a peak, like some sort of a week or a month when it's going to be at its uh, fullest well, form? No. Let me tell you this. We do, there will be a couple different peaks, and the reason why that is is because in some areas of the cloud that the the, the uh, fluctuation is light and in other areas of the cloud the fluctuation is stronger and there is places where it's stronger and lighter and stronger so you'll be going through a period of stronger fluctuation and then it will calm down and be more of a slower fluctuation and then speed back up again we do not know what is causing that but it is what it is. And so there will be times when the fluctuation is stronger. I do not know if you want to call that a peak or not, but that is something that we have, as we've analyzed the cloud, it, it does seem to have slower moving energy in it and then faster moving energy. And then some of the faster moving energy in one portion is very dense which means that the movement is very, very fast. And it goes very fast between a small space of, a, 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 a small area of space. And some areas move very casually through long periods of space. You would have to visualize it the way we see it. But there will be some definite surprises, I'm sure. Mm. I see. But I do not think that it will harm mankind. Fourth dimensional energy is something that is natural to the universe. So it is just as fifth dimensional and sixth dimensional and whatever kinds of energy you want to call it, they're all natural to the universe because God created them all. However, you are not used to experiencing the fourth dimensional energy in this way. I do not think that it is harmful, but I do think that it may cause some people to think that they are going crazy because they're going to be visualizing things that they feel are not there but are actually they're seeing into different timelines and things of this nature. So be aware of that, that you are not going crazy. You may just get a glimpse now and then of other timelines and things of that at nature. And there have been many people that are already experiencing a great deal of uh, deja vus and a great deal of things that really aren't there, but their, their sensitivity to the fourth dimensional energy is much higher, and they're getting uh, glimpses already, and the, the, the strongest part of the energy isn't even here yet, or I to your planet yet. That's it. That's it. And my last question would be like, after the cloud, what uh, will happen to you and Kyle? Will it open certain stuff, like, it will be and it will be gone and that's it? It will be gone. We do not know how it's going to affect human humanity in the long run. We yeah. know that it will affect the energy of fourth dimension, which is in all of your minds and being... Uh, being 
actually getting stronger in all humanity because of your next step in evolution which is telepathy now we are wondering if this will bring a faster evolution to hmm. your kind at when we first started to observe your telepathy we first started to see the beginning of your next step in evolution it was going to take 170 to 200 years we're wondering if this cloud will speed that up mm. it is very very possible but we cannot make that speculation it is something that I mean we can make a speculation but it is not a fact we know that it will affect you and bring out more fourth dimensional energy in what way we're not sure will it cause more psychic energy to be produced will it cause other portions of the brain to be opened that are now you see you only use a very small portion of your brain and much of the brain has many other gifts in it telekinesis psychic energy the ability to grow extra limbs things of this nature that have not been awakened in your mind yet we are wondering if some people will become like uh, mutants in the sense that the, some of this energy in other portions of the brain will be opened to the extent that they will be able to use gifts that were not evolved yet mm, the X-Men this is how the X-Men exactly. begins uh, but thank you very, that is very we do not want to put that actually we don't really want to see that happen I think that that, that would be rather uh, it would be a, a catastrophe in many situations <laughs> but because you are not evolved to handle that at this time so mm -hmm. we would not want to see that happen but we uh, we do see that it is possible because of the way that the fourth dimensional energy fluctuates could it possibly open some areas of the brain that have not been opened yet could it stimulate a greater telepathic could it stimulate healing processes it could um, bring up the immune system to a greater height there are many 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 things many positive things that it could do and we try to look at all the effects of fourth dimensional energy as a positive thing but you see that is yet to be seen okay yeah talk about that Kari continue Megan is there any more questions uh, I'm done thank you very very much to Kerr and much love to you it's always a pleasure to speaking with you it is always a pleasure to speak to you as well. Much love. Namaste. Much love. Get your wa. Muha kosh kishuma. Hello, Tikur. Hello. Who is this? This is Megan. Hello, it's Megan. To commune with you. It is lovely to meet you. Um, within the last year or so, friends yes. that I've known for many, many years have been sending me messages and emails about abilities that they have not been able to understand or speak of, and it is seemingly out of the blue. Um, I'm wondering if this is a glimpse of <laughs> ascension, why do they come to me? Um, is this yes. part of of the uh, is this going to happen more in the future yes it is possible these people have had spiritual awakenings and some of their gifts are more spiritual than they are part of the brain opening up meaning that gifts from above are being given now there are some of those gifts that are from mental fourth dimensional energy being very active so therefore if they've done a lot of astral travel if they know how to bilocate or things of this nature this could also stimulate fourth dimensional energy enough to open smaller gifts in the brain but not to their fullest capacity as to be dangerous does that make sense to you yes it does but there are many spiritual gifts 
happening at this time as well. So do not be confused between the fourth dimensional energy and spiritual energy, which is something slightly different. It does stimulate fourth dimensional energy, but it does not open areas in the brain. And so those examples you gave are um, examples of fourth dimensional. Um, Correct. Okay, yes. This I understand. Thank you so much. That is all. You're welcome. Remember, the, the, many of you are on a spiritual journey as well as a journey to, for ascension, the next step in the evolution for your kind. And so the spiritual journey is a beautiful thing, and the fourth dimensional energy may help that. But remember that spiritual energy from God and from the angels and the things of this nature is a different kind of energy that is working within you. It is not necessarily fourth, fifth, sixth. Uh, angels and God are in a realm outside of all the dimensions. And so their dimensional energy is very different because it is not part of fourth, fifth, or sixth dimension. It is of their own. Angel energy, godlike energy, Elohim energy, these are outside of regular normal realms, usually. Well, Elohim is actually in a realm, but it is so high. It is different than giving any particular kind of realm energy. Do you understand that? Yes. So therefore, your spiritual journey with God and things of that nature have a totally different kind of energy and can affect all different kinds of things within the body. But their intention is to help you to grow in spirit and purity and, and, and in the positivities of the world and not to actually change your physiology or not to change your psychology in the sense that you are going to be uh, an advanced human but fourth dimensional energy and energies of that nature can affect those kind of things, at least theore theoretically, yes. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Iatawa. Shirley? Shirley. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Good afternoon, Takura. It's, a, it's an honor to meet you. I haven't met you yet. It is an honor to meet you. Um, I'd, I'd just like to uh, ask a question. There's a lot of activity going around me at the moment, um, and it keeps on wake. I keep on getting woken up at three o'clock in the morning, and I'm getting a lot of mixed messages. And um, yes. Uh, someone said to me that there was uh, uh, an entity around me from the Talini race. Talini. Yeah, and yeah. It is, it, is, it, is it in spirit or in body? Do you know? Because three o'clock in the morning is a spiritual hour. It is um, when some spirits are more active on your planet is three in the morning. I don't know. I just asked what was around me, and I heard there was a entity called uh, from the Talini race. From the I would have to look into that because where are you at? And you're in England. Where That's, are you? Yes, yes, in England. Uh, we would have to check that out. I would have to look into that. I will get with you about that later. Okay, thank you. Write, write Jim a note so he remembers. Okay, thank you. Uh, Takur, I have a question from uh, Leander Villarta. Um, yeah. Hello, my question is, what is Takur's viewpoint on traveling physically with aliens and are there any messages for me? Thank you. At this point, tra traveling with aliens physically is not really part, is not really allowed by galactic law because first contact has not come yet. And no one should be riding with aliens until first contact. 
but I know that this is still happening because some species have taken it on themselves to do this. But if they get caught, they will be in trouble. But uh, it depends on the species. You must know that some species are positive and some are not. If they have come to take you for a ride on their spaceship, sight to sight, meaning that you're going in a full body, then be very cautious of this because the only times in the past that they have taken people for rides sight to sight, or for the most part they have taken them, were to analyze them or study them or to actually do medical testing on them. Make sure that they are friendly and that they, this is not what their intention is. But I know that there are some friendly species that are breaking this rule because they feel that your governments are unkind and un they do not understand what first contact really means and how important it is. And so therefore or they are breaking the rules to let some people have the adventure that they always wanted. We cannot do that, however. We must maintain a good status with your government so that when first contact comes, we will be clear and able to set up communications and travel between the, the planets and between the ships without any problem. Thank you. Uh, Omran? Hello, Takir. Yes. It's nice to meet you. It is nice to meet you. Thank you. And I have a question about what you said earlier about energies. Yes. The know how it will affect me mentally, physically, and spiritually yes. in the time of December and afterwards because I feel like it will affect me very much. It will activate things inside me. It may, yes. What is your question? Just how it will affect me. This is not known yet. It has not been oh, experienced yeah. with humans at this point. Yes. Okay. I individual understand. human may be affected in a different way. So therefore, how it will affect you we do not know. There will be a great study being going on okay. as this fourth dimensional energy goes through. And we there will be some protection for those we see that are reacting strongly to it. We will try to give them some protection and some calming for it. But actually, we do not know what to do yet because we don't know what it's going to do yet. So we have some ideas. We have speculation, as others do. And so we are getting prepared for this time in your existence. So much preparation is happening at this time for this event. But we do not know exactly. It could be very easily taken care of, or the fourth dimensional energy may do very little. And this is what we're hoping for that you will not, that you don't have enough fourth dimensional energy for it to affect you in a great way. But there are a few of you that have a great deal of fourth dimensional energy. And so therefore, those are the ones we are really looking out for. But we, there, everyone has some, and everyone will be affected in some way. We're just not sure if it will be a, a very brilliant way or if it will be very slight, if it will be extreme, this is what we don't know. Are you done? And so, yes. I'm sorry, I was asking if it was done, I wasn't sure. Ah. I was just unmuted, sorry. Uh, that is yeah, well, well, it's because I have experienced timeline shifts, shifts in the recent weeks. Yes. And suddenly, I'm just 
in five years in the future. And I yeah. feel it's, it feels like five years. I don't know if it. It will affect so, some greater than changed. others. If you're already feeling that great of a shift, you might be getting used to it at this time. Hopefully, when the actual stronger energy comes, you'll be getting acclimated to it, and it will be not so bad. However, I don't know that for sure. It could be that you may experience a, a greater time shift. We know, do know one thing. If you do shift to another timeline, you will return to this one when the, the one that you're in when the when the cloud passes it the timelines will go back to the way they were and you won't be able to stay in another timeline because you weren't born to it yes it's also the same when i feel it i go into it and then come back immediately or after yes. a few minutes i understand that that makes perfect sense yeah it it does and my second question is well, I have listened to all this information about the the the, the colonies. Yeah. And I thought, well, will my body? I mean, will will I handle it if I were to live on the colonies? You could not live permanently in fourth dimensional energy. I believe after thirty four days in fourth dimensional energy, having been born to third dimension, you will start your molecules will start to expand and you will disintegrate eventually but you see you were born into third dimension so you cannot you can only live in fourth dimension for a short period of time before you start to dissolve so therefore um, you can be there for a while and then come back and be there for a while and then come back but you cannot stay there a, a very long period of time in the human days. 34 days in hum human time is the longest you could stay in fourth dimension. Some people less, some people maybe a day more. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. But you see it's because... a different dimension, a different density. Molecule structure is slightly different and therefore yeah. that is why you cannot live it in it permanently your molecule, you were not born to that dimension and so eventually your molecules will start to move in the fourth, uh, fourth dimensional way which will disintegrate you as a third dimensional being and it, you will not become fourth dimensional you will just no, cease to exist in that material being. That is how it works. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I didn't, yeah. Well, thank you for that. That was my question. You're welcome. Thank you for the help. Yes. Uh, Takur, I have more of a, a um, comment from uh, Slava for you. Yes. It's, it's a bit long. Um, so he said, at the beginning of this week, I remember someone brought to me a little girl she had blonde hair, almost white, and she began to tell me something. She began to say something to me, and I remember she was so happy and joyful. Um, and then I said something gentle and kissed her. This little girl, she reminded me of something important, something I need to remember. What we, what we need to remember, and I, and I will remember and just would like to say thank you for that. Um, and then the second thing was, and I would like to share this experience which I had before I came to the human colony. It was at the summer of 2013. I remember a female energy. She's still very close and then I remember we embrace um, like we were one being. So I felt deep feelings. I felt unity of oneness and I remember I felt like I was part of, we were part of each other. Um, it was a deep emotional experience. They yes. were, we were dressed in white robes and all the people around were also dressed in white robes. 
And in the next moment, I remember we walked down the street. The sun was shining. We walked together as a group. There were several people, and I remember there was a little boy and a dog, and I felt like this child was like a part of me, like we were part of one being. I remember we walked and played with a ball, a dog, panting wood, playing with us. In the next moment, I remember we stood close to each other as a group of people. We formed something like a circle, and it was an and it was amazing. We began to circle, circling in a dance or dance in a circle. I don't know. Our collective dance accompanied with something like acrobatic elements, and I remember like a circle in a dance, and it was like a universe flying before my eyes. It was amazing. I am not sure what happened, but it was so emotional and deep experience, and I would like to thank you for this wonderful experience. It was a uh, past life remembrance from a Syrian culture. This is one of their the wedding culture and the celebration afterwards. They do have marriages and unities, and this was a unity and a celebration afterwards the children were born before the wedding before the ceremony had begun they were your children in Syrian culture you may have children before you are married because that is not a problem in their culture but it is that if love is expressed in this way that eventually a union will take place there are unions of this kind all over the Syrian planet and the white robes are to express that of enlightenment knowing that you have come together in enlightened moments of love you have realized that you are inseparable in some way and that you, your life will continue to be inseparable. There are many things about the Syrian culture that speak about unity and fullness, and they are a culture of community, and therefore they have many spouses at times. There are some portions of that society that allow for many spouses and marriages and unities. There are other portions that prefer one or only two. But it depends on what portion of the culture you live in and attest to or attune yourself to. Therefore, it is a beautiful thing that you experience there. Their, their ceremonies are beautiful and very emotional and very loving and all are participating that are part of friends family and even part of the community is invited if they wish to join if they know of who this is if they have something to contribute thank you to Kerr um, uh, Sarah's next I almost Sarah. wish I didn't have to go right after that. But hello to Kerr. Hello to hello, my dear. <laughs> hello there. I love you. I um, love you as well. I have a question because this happened last week. A friend of ours from the group did a healing session on someone else. The, the information was given to me about a lizard being coming out of the person's mouth and I didn't really give it much thought until the following night I had a dream of this white cat with a yellow white eyes and I began throwing up and two of these lizard type beings came out of my mouth it was like a purge and this person as they were healing the other person before she was channeling her higher self and her higher self said that most humans have this this is something that most humans have but they are unaware of this what exactly was this lizard being and 
I guess just upon hearing it, I healed myself of it. So what is this? Interesting. They said that most humans have this. I am not aware that most humans have that. However, it is with dealing with sickness. If you are a healer and do not protect yourself always, even one time not protecting yourself, you can bring on yourself some of these a alien um, sicknesses. And they come out of other people and into you. So therefore, if you were healing someone, please protect yourself. You have purged yourself of them, but not everyone has it. Mostly it's healers that get this when they do, do not protect themselves properly. There are different creatures that like to, to cause illnesses and uh, pain in other people. And you, whenever you're bringing these out of them, if you're not protected, they can come to you. So please, as a healer, protect yourself. Now these, now that you have protected yourself and that is done, it is always said to protect yourself during healing, especially energy healing and things of that nature. So make sure. They, these creatures are not all that common, however. I, I don't want to make it sound like everybody that does a healing will get one of these creatures if they don't protect themselves. They are not that common, but they are very much uh, negative. So please, yes, please protect yourself so you don't get one. Now, I see that you had two of them? Yeah. Interesting. That is a lot. Oh, who was that cat? I do not know who the cat was. It was not anyone from my species. No, but it looks you... like a little human, like a little earth cat, but it definitely, it looked way, is way like spirit type. It was probably of spirit. Check into that. I believe it probably was of spirit because it helped you to purge. Yeah, that's interesting. Because I was totally unaware of this information before. Well, this but. is rare. These particular, they are like, they are like spiritual beings. You're what they call demons or whatever, but they're very small. They're not the powerful ones, but they are powerful enough to cause illness. Mm -hmm. And they can look like lizards, yes. I would describe them more as ugly. <laughs> Very well. And I have another question. Um, at the moment, my body seems to be going through a, an ascension, ascension uh, process. I can feel new brain paths opening. Yes. And I'm... Ha it's ha it's having an effect on my spine. So the last week or so, I've been in sort of not sick because I understood what was happening, happening, but it was pain. It's painful. Interesting. <sighs> but you, I'm, you I'm realize new this senses is coming online. I'm noticing new senses coming online as this process this continues. Is, there are a couple different species around you, the Hathor and the Naga, that are mm -hmm. dealing with you and preparing you for different things that are coming. They see the fourth dimensional energy and they think that perhaps you're one of the people that will have very strong uh, effects to it. So they are preparing you for that at this time. Uh, do, not be, do not be worried. Mostly it's the Hathors. Uh, because you are their toning, you are the a toning person that they that is most important. Their ambassador of toning, if you will, and so they are protecting you. Very well. So it's mostly them opening up new pathways and things of that nature. Because yes, I they, they're giving my entire you. Body. Uh, they're giving you ways to ground out through these times that fourth dimensional energy will be very strong. 
they feel that you will need even though you have natural grounding they gave it to you at at hot springs they gave mm -hmm. that to everyone that was in that group the ability to ground when you say the word grounding they are giving mm -hmm. you even a deeper grounding effect you can feel these pathways mm. they're giving you but a great grounding effect because you may need it yes but there's a lot of pressure in the brain this as is well. do not worry about it they are they they would not hurt you I'm sure oh no I understand that that's not a problem yes. for me and uh, actually <sighs> the, the thought processes from the Naga is uh, are working on the brain as well so mostly the Hathors are working on the grounding procedures the Naga is worth it working on something in the brain and that's why you feel something in the brain with pressure is they are they are working to surround a certain portion of the fourth dimensional energy so that it is not even uh, exposed to that which is the fourth dimensional energy that is coming they want that portion to remain pure and then they will remove that that uh, covering when it, it's done there is something oh, okay. in that fourth dimensional energy portion they do not want interrupted. It may be part of the toning, it may be part of the languages, it's something, it's part perhaps of the download that you received. They don't want it messed with. Okay, and I have one more question. Um, so, apparently I found out that my pineal gland can talk back to me. <laughs> Of course. The body <laughs> can speak. Let me tell you that DNA can speak to you, the organs can speak to you, the brain can speak to you. Um, all things are possible. The thing is, they, they only speak when they need to speak. They only need, you can talk to them and they can listen, but yet rarely do they speak. But they do speak when they have to. Yes, and it told me this process that's happening right now with my body will last until the end of this month. Yes. Do not worry. Sorry. And it will not be... I think the worst part of it is over now. Yes, it is. most <laughs> The worst part of it, yes, it was painful. All right, thank yes. you. You're welcome. Much love to you. Much love, Sarah. Hi, Tikar. It's Sabrina again. Um, I have a couple of questions for myself. One was I wanted, I just wanted to confirm with you that um, the ETs had been uh, released, that they went home. They have. Okay. Um, the other question uh, or the other comment I wanted to make was if you could send some uh, healing energy or some vitamins or something for Valerie. Um, she will be going on a undergoing a procedure and I would like her at uh, her best to be able to, to manage it well. Very well. That will be done. Thank you. Um, and then uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you, this was actually personal. Um, uh, I am having difficulties hearing Lanuk. Um, oh. and, and I don't understand why. I do not either, but I will check it out. And we will put you back into contact. Okay. There must be something blocked in one of the channeling areas. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Jasmina had a question. She wanted to know if there was a message for her. One moment. Her message is coming from the angel that is coming next. I cannot give it. The angel must give it. Okay. Um, I also wanted to ask you about um, 
I've been hearing a lot of noises in my house and and like the day before yesterday I I heard when I went to sleep somebody was making noise in my room yes and you want to know who that is yes there there are a couple aliens that come to your room almost every day uh, they are protectors uh, they should not make any noise but I <laughs> they they are a Yuyil and a Syrian Sentia also visits who is a Syrian she has sent a protector to you as well and she comes also to visit yes and and it's interesting because um, <laughs> I I'm almost getting used to it because in the kitchen somebody tapped and they were actually like tapping like trying to make music but I believe that was a spirit if I'm correct very well um, I am not sure who all is visiting but I know of a few that um, some are well known to me and others are not but you do have a lot of visitors and a lot of spiritual visitors as well Yes, I know the angels have been staying around me quite a bit. Yes. And God. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, the next question was Liliana Restrepo. She would like to know if there's a message for her. Liana? Liliana. I did not hear the name. Liliana. Liliana. One moment, please. I cannot attach to her, so I do not know. One moment, please. Where is she at? Um, I am not sure. I believe she's in the States, but I'm not sure what state. I will get back to you on that one because I cannot locate her. Okay, that's fine, Tucker. Um, and uh, Krellick, he wants to know about a canine person that uh, that visit that visited him. Yes. Uh, yes. He wants to know if if it if if it was there physically. It was there holographically, but it. Uh, the way they can do that from the canine planet, it seems almost physical. So therefore, they have visited quite a bit. He has many visitors from the canine world. Be, um, I cannot remember the name, but the one of the officers has been visiting him. Also, Delilah. Also, uh, uh, someone new. Named Lashon, Lashon. So yes, several visitors from the Canine Planet. Okay, and uh, Sam S. Uh, says I've been going through some frustration and obstacle experiences lately, and want to know if I'm being messed around with by any negative entities. Can you help me clarify what's going on? And help in this matter, manner, matter. When, Thank you. What? Yeah. Oh, can sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Um, there are some negative beings around, but it is from they they're from they have been given to him from other people. It would appear that there is a family member that has given him a negative entity because of something that has is going on between them so therefore um, you can get rid of that you don't have to accept that 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 being really doesn't belong around you at all so um, just r get rid of it just say you don't uh, how how am I going to say this you you must rebuke it in the sense that it it has no purpose being around you so and yes it's trying to mess with you because this other person is angry or something there's some kind of problem 
So they sent some kind of negativity to you. So, but just get rid of it. It's not strong. It is messing with you, but you can definitely, I believe, get rid of it on your own. Okay, on that line, Tucker, um, can you help, in, I don't know if you can describe in some way, for people to learn to distinguish between when it's an entity and when it's just life or you or, or you know, or a chemical thing? That's a hard one, but the, to make it easy to do this, do a meditation on it. As soon as you meditate on it, you'll know exactly what it is. It will come in your meditation. If you intend your meditation to know what, if it's a spirit or if it's third dimension, you will get an answer immediately because uh, in your meditation it will come, it will be very plain. It will be very plain that you will know what it is that you are dealing with. If, that, if you do a meditation on that kind of intention, you will find out right away. Most people, that is if you can get into the meditation. Some people cannot even get there. But if you can, you will understand what it is. Yatawa, shutya, vata, yenawa, jikotawa. Continue. Okay. Um, because a lot of people have been going through this lately, um, and there, there are some that even have um, some uh, uh, demonic kind of spirits and that kind of thing. So um, Remember this. The fourth dimensional energy can incite all kinds of illusions as well. So be sure of what you're dealing with. Do the meditation. Find out what you're dealing with. If you're actually dealing with something of that nature, get help. Because if it is something of that nature, you will need help to get rid of it. If it's just a shadow energy, um, a negative poof, then you won't need much help. But if it's something stronger, yes, you will need some help. But identify it. Make sure you know what you're de dealing with. Do your meditations. Do your prayers. Ask God. Make sure that you are dealing with the truth. Okay, and can people that have their, their crown chakra very open, uh, can they set the intention to, to close it more? Or, you know, if they have the awareness that their energy is going down, perhaps close it so that uh, not anything or everything can get in? There are two times when the crown energy should be open in birth and in death. Other than that, the crown should remain fairly closed. You can receive energies from the crown. I am not saying that. But if you open the crown, the spirit and life energies, that's where the spirit and life energies come in and leave. So you do not want to be messing with the crown energies too strongly. If you open Open it up, you can bring in other entities into your energy process, which is not good. So therefore, leave the crown alone as far as using it to gain power in the body. You can do it through the third eye much more safely. Does that make sense to you? Yes, thank you, Tucker. And the fourth eye as well, the soma. You can bring in more energy through the actual third dimensional, fourth dimensional connections, whereas the, the crown is a more spiritual connection, but it is dangerous to mess with unless you know exactly what you're doing because it is the birth area and the death area. You can cause some very harsh things to happen if you're bringing in entities that are not supposed to be there through the life and death area. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, Tucker. I, I think a lot of people will appreciate that answer. Yes, the crown is sensitive. Of course it has other reasons to exist other than just life and death. However, but if you're opening it up wide, you're in, you have to know exactly what you're doing. Exactly. But to 
But to Kurt, when people do drugs and alcohol and that kind of thing, doesn't that open it? It opens the third eye, not the crown. Okay. The crown is not naturally opened by drug use. The third eye can be naturally opened by drug use. The crown is life and death. Now, if you get close to death with your drug use, yes, then the crown could be opened. But only if you are, if, if you are overdosing or whatever. Okay, so then when when um, when people have done um, drugs and that sort of thing, that that they get, uh, they seem to get a lot of negative entities. Um, what does that do to? Well, they did not send an intention on their use. It was more careless and irresponsible when they, if they're bringing in negativity. They've done it very carelessly and irresponsibly, or with people that have negative energies. So therefore, they can bring in these things inadvertently if they are not responsible. Right. And uh, would you say that calling upon the archangels, um, whenever they find themselves in really difficult situations, is a good choice? The archangels can help. They can help close up the crown chakra if there is overdose going on so that there is no death. But it will be a strong it will be a strong sensation. It will be it will be a strong uh, pu downward push if you understand what I'm saying. The angels will be able to help, but it will not be comfortable because you've put yourself in an uncomfortable position and they must move you into a position where they can work with you. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. And I have one last question from Pavel and he wants to know if there's any messages for him. What is the name? Pavel. Pavel, yes. Or Pavel. Pavel, yes. Yes. There's there are things coming for you. You've put out you've put out uh, uh, something that you're calling on something. And it is coming. Whatever it is that you have been calling on to happen is going to be happening soon. That is all I got. Okay. Thank you. And um, did I ask you for Jasmina? I'm yes, sorry. but the angels have to give that message. Okay, all right, sorry, sorry. I'm just trying to make sure I, I, I get everybody. Um, I think that was it on the, on the side. If anyone in the room with Jim has any questions, um, otherwise... I do not think anyone here does. Okay, no. so Michelle had one quick follow-up question, and then um, we will let you go to her. I know it's longer than you expected. Yes. Thanks, Takur. Brooke just wanted to know if she had any remaining um, entities um, that need to be obliterated. <laughs> no. Okay. Actually... No, things have, she has healing to do at this time. She has things to bring back into balance. It may appear to her that there are things still there, but it is not. Just things are out of balance, and as things get more grounded and things get more normal, you will see that things are, will come back to a different, a different attitude, if you will. Would you kindly recommend to her a way in which to achieve balance in this situation? I would, I would say to do some very do the things that she likes to do the most. Find her highest excitement right now and involve herself in that because that will bring everything into balance in a very positive way. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Much love. You're welcome. Thank you, Takar. Um, I want to thank you for coming, for uh, 
being so kind with your time. I know it's precious and you're very down, busy. There are others that want to speak. Yes. Thank you, Tucker. You're welcome. Much love. Much love. Namaste. Namaste.